After discovering the levels of toxic pollution in his New York City apartment in the aftermath of 9-11 and the potential effects upon his one-year-old daughter, 49-year-old Tim Leach, a.k.a. Spit Sticks, drummer of seminal 80s punk rock band Fear, decided to relocate to Portland, Oregon with his wife and family. Leaving behind the dollars and lifestyle, complete with all the rock and roll trappings, they arrived in Portland only for Tim to learn of his older brother's diagnosis of brain cancer. Tim then travelled regularly to Los Angeles, sometimes with his daughter, for a year, caring for and nursing his brother until his death. Returning to Portland, Tim was met with the unforeseen reality of a divorce, a custody battle and the ensuing debt which left him living in a single room apartment with only his recording equipment to his name. It was winter, um, there wasn't much work, I was shoveling snow here and doing firewood. I was really getting behind in my bills. Um, I of course had my rent, my utilities to pay, it was cold, it's a very cold apartment, base, basement apartment, so it costs a lot to heat it. And I found myself selling pieces of gear that I didn't really want to sell, but I wasn't using. Uh, so that was a little hurtful. I was just eking by and trying to feed myself and my daughter, and that was getting rough. I think it just hours after he pulled up in this U-Haul, and there he was, um, unpacking his gear and furniture, and he offered me a beer. Good start. I had met Abel as my first landlord when I moved here next to my brother's house, the apartment complex. My mom had lived in that apartment complex and passed away in that same complex. So when I moved here, he became my landlord. He offered me a management job uh, very early on when I moved into the apartment. But he had a sense of trust and brotherhood with me, and, and we just hit it off as friends. And when my marriage ended, he became a support system. And that's when I would first meet, when I first met his mom. And she would call me the gentleman. She was always very happy to see me, very s sparkly eyes, and just very warm. And it's like uh, my substitute mom hugs and vibes. So I enjoyed coming here as well. And coming here very often, she was by herself and for a lot of the time. And as her mental health uh, began to deteriorate, she needed someone here. She was wandering off by herself. We'd find her out on the street with a trash can, and we'd humor ourselves, uh, Abel and I, say, you know, you got anything yet, Mom? Are you collecting? And, but it was obvious that she was wandering off, and she really needed s someone here. And She was having balance problems. You know, she would misstep, and no faults, but something wasn't quite right, and took her to a, a young Romanian doctor who showed us the, the MRI, he goes, you know, he goes, take a look. He goes, hemorrhaging from years of high blood pressure. And I said, I, I, I don't know how to recognize He goes, it's plainly evident, all these dark spots. And uh, he says it's irreversible. I did not think Tim would be a caregiver. I did not think that this is how it would work out. All I know is that Tim was recently divorced and he heard that um, there was some space in my mom's house and that he could live there for free um, if he kind of helped out and watched over her. I thought it would be a good match. I felt like I was at the end of a road at that moment when this opportunity opened up so there wasn't any hesitation about or maybe there was a little hesitation, but not much at all for, for saying yes. I didn't know that he was a punk rocker. I heard that he was um, somehow involved in the music business. It's probably a good thing I didn't know ahead of time without meeting him, because I would have said no. Really? You know, it's... <laughs> Spit sticks? You mean the drummer? I would have thought that it's some druggy lazy punk rocker wanting a free place to crash. Um, so it's probably a good thing I didn't know. It's really something to see him play. So much energy and speed and precision. So 
I feed her every morning and clean up, of course, do the shopping. I have a food budget and feed her lunch. And if I'm not here, I prepare something. Or uh, one of her daughters is here uh, three times a week during the day for a few hours. So she's able to feed her if I'm not. But I'm very concerned, as, as I would be for my own children, uh, that they're fed right. And I feel that way about her, like she's like one of my own ch children. I'm very much a health nut. And I started feeding Mama with uh, my diet and and just affection and things that she wasn't getting. And she stopped wandering and she stopped her anxiety. And, and I saw a marked improvement. So I felt like, OK, I'm, my job is to extend this woman's life. And I still feel that way. And I think I'm doing a good job. I didn't know that he would be cooking a gourmet breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day and that he would only purchase fresh, organic foods. Well, it's just the way he lays out the bananas and the toast and the eggs. and It's really quite the presentation. I thought, okay, fiber come down off dementia, I'm set right here. It's, it's, it's a good place. It really is. It's gotten out of control. It, like, now my niece even demands that Tim cook for them <laughs> when they're in town. It's really quite a big production. And uh, it, it's good. I, I didn't think nutrition had, could change someone's um, health in, in such a radical fashion, but I see the evidence. Tim is very careful about nutrition. He studies nutrition. He understands it and knows about it. And uh, so my mom takes nothing, no medications, no pills, nothing. She eats his food, and it's that's it. She's more attentive. There's more singing. Being a caregiver uh, really is something that comes natural to me. It's something that I enjoy doing. Running a household is something that I've done in the past, and I enjoy that. Caring for someone is a rewarding job. It's just to make someone feel good, like Mama in the morning. If she's depressed or confused, a hug, a squeeze, rub her the back, uh, some positive words. She'll call me Odernosh, which is golden. She's uh, snapped out of her dark little cloud, and it's wow, and my words and my physical presence is medicine for someone. And, and I'm watching her. I think, you know, my mom died when she was 81, mom was 82, and I think she'll live quite a long time. That's my goal, to, to see her live long.